The Kingdom Hearts Missing Link closed beta has officially begun. With it being only available in Japan, many are wondering what this new Kingdom Hearts experience is going to be like. Along with this beta is a heap of new information about the game, how it plays, the graphics, and everything in between. Although it's important to mention that those participating in the beta are not allowed to share any images or video of the game. Everyone is allowed to share their opinions online, but actual content is not allowed. So everything I'm mentioning in this video is going to be stuff that people have experienced in the beta. Until I can get my hands on the game itself, which probably won't be for a while. But there's still so much here and I'm happy to put all this information in one video for you guys. For starters, let's start with the official information that has been released first. The Kingdom Hearts Dark Road Twitter has shared some official screenshots of the game with images that I can hopefully share. Since this is directly from the horse's mouth, I hopefully don't get into any trouble for putting this together. Okay, let's get started. This is everything we know about Kingdom Hearts Missing Link from the beta so far. For starters, not all the content is available in the beta from the very beginning. The Kingdom Hearts Dark Road Twitter has broken down content releases into different days. For starters, players are pushed to go outside and take their smartphones on an adventure. Similar to Pokemon Go, Kingdom Hearts Missing Link has a feature that keeps track of the player's location. The overworld of the game is laid out like the real world, allowing players to move around this Scala and Kylum version of it. While walking around, players can enable hands-free mode, which allows HP and MP to heal automatically, auto battles, and much more. Then there's the other option with pad mode. This allows players to move around the map without needing to physically move around. Although players will need to earn AP in order to participate in battles. At the moment, it only seems there are two ways to earn AP. The first is by defeating enemies in battle in d-pad mode and the other is by moving around in gps mode regardless there seems to be a passive and aggressive way for players to build up their ap ap can then be used to participate in more battles which then leads to more rewards down the line i mean this is pretty common for mobile games to have a form of cooldown between combat and on january 14th the area boss quest will be unlocked these are likely missions against smaller heartless for players to take on similar to kingdom hearts union cross i imagine these are just the in-between missions that players will need to get through then on january 17th raid boss quest will be available in the image, they show the player character facing off against a behemoth Heartless. If it's anything like Pokemon Go, this is likely where players will be able to team up with one another to face off against a massive Heartless enemy. At the moment, there is a feature to invite friends, but it is not currently available. More information on how these raid battles will work will need to be saved for another video. Also, the story missions are currently locked in the game, meaning those looking to collect some juicy narrative will have to wait until the final game releases. Now, let's get into the nitty gritty here. How does Kingdom Hearts Missing Link perform? Well, the first impression of the games are surprisingly positive with how well the game looks. Most of the tweets surrounding the graphics for the game have been incredibly positive. For starters, many are saying the game runs incredibly well, akin to a Nintendo Switch title. The game runs without any lag or stutter, which is pretty important. I've even seen people mention older iPhone models and the game runs still pretty well. The game runs without any lag or stutter, which is very important. Upon booting up the game, players are able to customize their own Keyblade wielder. In this game, the customization options are fairly extensive, allowing players to change their gender, race, and small details like their facial features. I saw someone mention that, that it's possible to change the color of each eye individually, and if that's the case, I feel incredibly seen right now. Not only that, but accessory items and changing the color of clothing is also available. I imagine I'm going to spend a long time customizing my own Keyblade user, especially since this is the first 3D game to allow this many options to choose from. And similar to Kingdom Hearts Union Cross, players are able to purchase more avatar items using jewels. Jewels do make a return and act as this game's premium currency. Of course, it's a free-to-play game and we all know they gotta make their money somewhere. And ultimately, I don't really mind having to pay a few bucks if my character's gonna look extra sexy. Those looking to play the game on a controller will also likely need to wait until someone makes it happen. At the moment, the beta has no controller support. It's unknown if this will change in the final release. Since the game has such a heavy emphasis on going outside and seeing the real world, it might be something that someone will have to mod into the game. Of course, that's probably when the game is finally fully released. When completing missions, players will unlock materials that they can use to upgrade their Keyblades. This is another feature that makes a return in Kingdom Hearts Union Cross. Although the thing that makes this interesting is that apparently switching Keyblades will change the player's fighting style. In the beta, there are currently two Keyblades to choose from. Light Order and Fortune Gear. At the moment, these are brand new Keyblades and will likely have their names changed when they make their way around the globe. The last time a Kingdom Hearts game let us do this was Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days, where every Keyblade the player would give to Roxas would dramatically change how he plays in combat. Of course, more Keyblades will be available in the full game, so it will be interesting to see how far these changes go. Also, there has been mention of Shot Locks making an appearance in the game. Not sure how they work just yet, but if it's anything like the mainline games, I'm sure they're going to be a spectacle. It's also possible to leave battles and return to the map by pausing the game. Of course, since this is like Pokemon Go, the map 
map world would be affected by the real world weather. In Pokemon Go, it would affect the type of Pokemon that would appear on the map, and in Kingdom Hearts Missing Link, the spawns of the Heartless will be directly affected by the weather, meaning certain Heartless will likely only appear during specific weather conditions. Now, this is something I want to mention as a Pokemon Go fan that seems to be a concern mentioned here. So, Kingdom Hearts Missing Link is a game that will eat up your battery. There have been several reports of the game running through the battery very quickly, even with the low power mode being available in the game. This one is a no-brainer since the game looks so good and it's running on mobile hardware. This isn't exactly something new for me since Pokemon Go players have been strapped with a battery pack since 2016, but this is something players might need to consider purchasing if they want to take Kingdom Hearts Missing Link seriously. This is a game that can be played in both horizontal and vertical modes. The UI can be changed depending on which version the player is experiencing. Personally, playing a mobile game on vertical is the way to go, but I'm glad the game is giving players the option to choose between how they want to go about it. Of course, the gotcha system is back with three stars being the current rarest in the game. This is likely only for the beta with five and six star statues being released later in the final game. And with a new Kingdom Hearts game means a new version of Dearly Beloved. It's the same one that was mentioned in the Kingdom Hearts Missing Link trailer. And this game features its own CG opening similar to other Kingdom Hearts titles. There's no information about the CG scene, like what the music is or what characters appear, but the fact that there's a big CG opening in a Kingdom Hearts game just makes me very happy. And it just goes to show that they aren't kidding around this time. Now, there is a leaked screenshot of the game floating around the internet. In this screenshot, it shows how the gameplay looks relative to the character and everything. Now, whoever posted this is way braver than I am since Square Enix is incredibly strict about this beta, and I personally will not be showing you the image to avoid getting in any copyright trouble but I am going to describe this image for you. Of course, you can go online and search for it yourself if you want to see it, but I'm going to describe what is in the image as clearly as I can. In combat, they show the player character in the center of the screen fighting a dark side heartless. Now, this dark side heartless is a lot smaller than the normal ones, and this one only mentions that it's level one, as if this was an earlier battle in the game. This battle seems to take place outside the main cityscape of Scala Ed Kylum and is happening at night on a beach nearby. The player is holding his keyblade similar to Riku and Kingdom Hearts 1. The buttons on the bottom left hand side of the screen feature images of Mickey, Donald, and Goofy, each with their own Kingdom Hearts 3 models. Each one is assigned a specific magic. For example, Mickey has fire, and Goofy has what seems to be arrow, but I'm not sure. These are likely three different types of special attacks. On the bottom right is a Keyblade logo within a small circle, likely being the attack button. So it seems players are allowed to attack like a normal Kingdom Hearts game, but all magic and special attacks are attached to a special meter. Then there's also this giant auto button on the screen, potentially completing the battles for you like previous Kingdom Hearts games. There's also a small jump button, showing a silhouette of a Sora looking character jumping in the air, and there's a camera button allowing players to reposition the camera at any time. Lastly, there's also a clock in the corner, likely timing the player on how well they perform. Maybe defeating the enemies faster will give the player more rewards like in older titles. And then there's this green logo that I can't exactly figure out what it is. It kind of looks like a heel, but it's directly over the player's head and in the player's head on the HUD. Maybe this is like a certain boost players can apply before jumping into battle. And just looking at this image makes it feel like a traditional Kingdom Hearts experience. And that's basically everything we have to cover from all this. Personally, I'm incredibly excited about this title and all the other information that's going to release in the next few days. I think the biggest thing to take away from this is that it feels like a normal Kingdom Hearts game. For so long, the mobile Kingdom Hearts titles have felt like side products of the series, but it looks like they're finally taking their time to create a gameplay loop that matters. Of course, more on gameplay and raid battles will have to wait until a later time when they open them up, but until then, I'm so hyped for everything we've seen so far. What do you think about Kingdom Hearts Missing Link? Does all this new information excite you? Thank you all so much for watching. Please be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and stay awesome.